Um, hopefully, you know a little bit about it already. Uh, the .NET architecture is what we work in and what IronSpeed Designer is built in, and uh, it's a fundamental foundation for the software we're using. What are we going to cover in this presentation? We'll talk about the .NET code model, the page lifecycle of web pages, the client side versus service side, master pages in your application, uh, why you have or what are end to your applications, and what does IronSpeed Designer give you. And then we'll cover at the end where to learn more about IronSpeed Designer. Throughout the webinar, as Brendan said, you can put in questions. Uh, when we have some to answer, we'll try and answer them between the different uh, topics and answer them as they come up. Just get your questions in because we enjoy answering what you want to hear instead of just what we want to hear. Okay, oh, look at that. First, we'll start with the .NET code model. There really are uh, uh, two kinds of .NET code models for web pages. There's a single file page model. The, here, the layout and code are all in one ASPX file. As you can see here, you have your script and your uh, ASPX. And it's all one model. It's only used for very simple applications. Um, what we use, and what most people use, is the code behind page model. Here, the code and the layout are separated into separate files. Your layout is in your ASPX. Your code behind is in VB or C sharp files. You don't get any performance difference from a single page model. Um, but it does allow the reuse of code common code in your applications. And designers can design layout while the developers can write code. This is the best practice for an end-tier application. The code behind is specified in the ASPX. Each page, ASPX page, refers to its own code behind file. Code behind is derived from the page class of .NET or, or, as in the case of IronSpeed Designer, from something we call the base application page, which is derived from the page class. So the best practices for the .NET code model are use the code behind page model for extensibility, derive your page from common class rather than from page class directly, and include your all your common page logic in the common page class. If you'll take a look at the base application page in IronSpeed Designer and any IronSpeed Designer application, you'll see what I mean. Now we're going to talk about the page lifecycle. This, uh, this means basically what stages does a page go through uh, as it goes from a request from your browser to the server and then sending it back to your browser. It first on the server. You get a request and then it initializes. You load the user interface controls. You read data from the database. You populate the UI controls. And then you render or display the page and send it to the browser. Later on, uh, when the page comes back, you can val you validate data, save data into the database, and redirect back to the calling page. .NET handles the loading of the page, converting ASPX controls to HTML, because you realize that all the ASPX, when a request comes in, the ASPX is processed and converted to pure HTML and then sent out in the final page that goes to the uh, user's browser. And the rendering of the controls on the page. What gives you the power to control the process is the events that are, ra are raised during the life cycle. And here, your event handling functions, the, mostly the ones 
put in by iron speed, but you can always program your own, uh, handle the various events, and allow you to perform your own customizations and code. <clears throat> the event-based model, uh, which is all of .NET, with programming by responding to events. You write an event handler, and it's initiated and executed when that event occurs in the overall .NET framework. We have three main events in the uh, initial in the page display. First, you initialize the page. Uh, then you load the data from the database. Then you uh, pre-render is the name of the event, but you basically render all the contents of the page and send it to the browser. The calling hierarchy of a page, uh, this is a page with a record control. That is a control which is displaying the contents of record when, uh, and it goes through init, uh, which is, and then page init handlers. I won't read all these. They are there on the slide, and they're the names that are used in .NET. Uh, in particular, you should notice that most things handle happen during the load event. Uh, in page load, you have authorized, which is where security is monitored, and then you have the loading of the data and the binding of the fields, and finally the rendering of the page. After you display a page, the server releases the page instant. Nothing remains in the server about the page or the data. There, uh, there is no memory of what it sent out to you. Any state information in the page is therefore maintained by view state. View state is uh, .NET uh, function and it automatically stores values of controls in the view states and loads them back on a postback. Postback is when a uh, user's action causes the information that's on your page to be posted back to the server. An event is raised, your page instance is recreated, and the UI control is repopulated from the view state. And then your server-side event handler is called. Uh, the examples of these are a button click, a selected item in a drop-down, or just type text type in a text box. If you cause an event, then you must have an event handler registered in order to request a postback. During a postback at the server, there are four events raised. Remember before, there were three routine events part of a page. And then there's one more added in the init and load. And then the event handler, where postback events are handled by the server. And then pre-rendering. And here's an example of the hierarchy of the record control when it's saving data. It's, it's already been composed, sent to your browser, and then sent back with data to save. And here you'll notice the difference. Basically, it has the init, oops, init load, and then the save button event, which, and then the pre-render. During postback, you should always check in an Iron Speed Designer application. Uh, we have a variable called is postback. It tells you whether you're doing postback because as a performance uh, feature, you don't want to load data during postback. You only load data during initial display. So, and you can determine if you're in postback by the is postback variable. View state is, the, as I said, is a standard feature of .NET. Uh, by default, the state information is maintained in HTML and sent to the browser. It's encoded, as you can see here. Here's an example of a view state. Um, and it's a large block of encoded characters. You can optionally, instead of including your view state with the page, you can have the view state maintained in this session or 
are in your ca in a cache or in a file or in a database. But there's additional work required for that. The session or cache can get timed out. Your file or database requires regular cleanup. Uh, so even though the view state bloats the page content, if you look at a page uh, that comes back, you'll see that the view state is a large blob of characters. Uh, but it's best to leave it uh, on the page because it functions best there. And the size penalty you pay is outweighed by the convenience of it. So the best practices for your page lifestyle, do most of the work by handling the load event. Um, and it should be used for only for initializing event handlers. And there's a, a caveat with that, that it is better to initialize handlers on the load event if you have any tab containers in your panels. Uh, then your pre-render should be only used to handle dependent controls. Uh, and turn that around and say, if you have dependent controls, uh, you will probably put your events in the, handle your events in the pre-render event uh, to check because everything has been rendered, and ready to be rendered, and you want to check whether or not you're going to change it. Then there's security for a page should be checked and load. If you'll recall, I showed you on the first uh, page hierarchy that the authorized event, which is what does the checking in an iron speed designer application, is in the load event. And you use the page view state even though it sends a lot of data to the browser. Where to store your information in the view state, the session, the cookie, or the database? Well, view state is unique for a given page. So, and the session is unique for the browser session. And so the session exists as long as that browser maintains a connection to the server. The cookie is persistent on a client machine and used to store information related to the user and the application. Each of these methods has its own purposes determined basically by how it functions and what its persistence is. Uh, we have a place for questions, but that's OK. If you don't have any yet, um, start thinking about your questions and go ahead and get them into Brendan as soon as you can. The sooner we get them, the, the better. Uh, it's good to also you'll get better attention to the questions if we don't have a whole blob all at once at the end and get them as we go along. Now we're going to talk about client side versus server side. Client side is basically your browser the, that's, or the computer that is communicating with your server. Anything executed on the client doesn't have to go back to the server and so executes much faster. You can change the appearance of controls to make them visible or not, enable them or disable them. Uh, you per can perform client-side validation, which is a very important thing, uh, doing basically preliminary screening of anything that's in a form before it's posted back. This saves a lot of time. And you can pop up warnings and execute scripts. The important thing about client side is that the scripts need to be loaded with a page load or postback so that they're executed on the later on the client side. The server side executes, of course, out the server and sends the data back to the client's browser. This is either in the form of a, a full page request or as an AJAX in the form of uh, XML data has it has access to the data access layer and the business layer of your application. Uh, it has the full application and programming environment and uh, software environment there. It's strongly typed and allows you to use classes, the .NET classes. So of course, this is a .NET environment running in the uh, web server. It executes after client-side. That is, client-side determines it basically if you're uh, 
going to allow the request to continue or whether it's aborted and then after you, you know, or it makes any adjustments then uh, after your client side executes it's sent to the server and then the server side executes. You load your script to the client side to have them executed on the next uh, load or postback. The order of execution, first you do page load and then you do page postback. Now this is uh, viewed from your uh, in your application, you'll always see the first the page that's loaded with its data, and then if there are any modifications to it or any changes, uh, any redirection, uh, that causes a post back and the server sees the page again when it's posted back. Ajax has become very popular uh, among .NET applications uh, for very good reasons. Uh, using Ajax update panel in .NET, it creates fast and flicker-free updates. It's extremely simple to implement. You surround your ASP controls with an update panel control. Here you see an example. And then only the content that has changed is sent back. The browser only paints, and the browser, when it receives the reply, paints only the changed content. You can have multiple or nested update panels, uh, and the code behind doesn't change when you're using AJAX. The code behind is still the same. You can show your progress in AJAX using an update progress control and you use an animated uh, GIF image to show that. For Ajax, although you can have multiple panels uh, embedded, it's best to use a single update panel. Use multiple update, using update multiple panels uh, can you require han special handling when updating dependent information. The single update panel updates only changed controls, and Iron Speed Designer generates a single update panel per page. Let's take a look at a couple of questions here and see what. Uh, oh, small print today, Brendan. <laughs> no, no, this is this is fine. What do you mean by dependent control? Um, Dependent control is one to control dependent on another. I wish I had a, a specific example I could give you. Um, don't think I do right now, but basically uh, that's what it means. It's dependent on something else. And so, of course, its handling relies on something else. We developed with Iron Speed 10 and we noticed a latency of time response for, for page display. Is there any way we can explore how to resolve this? Well, if, if you've developed a website and not a web application, and you've, uh, then the model is that the, page, the pages are not compiled to start with. The just-in-time compiler of .NET takes the pages and compiles them when they first are requested. And with a website, that means that the very first page that a, that a particular session encounters will compile many parts of the page, the preliminaries, the scripts, any uh, code that it has to use right away. And so there's always a delay on the very first page, and then other pages uh, are handled quite rapidly. Now, I don't know if that's what you're experiencing, but that's usually uh, where this type of question comes from. Does ISD use AJAX when generating an application? Yeah, unless you turn off update panel, and you can do that in the application generation options, uh, yes, IronSpeed Designer uses update panel and gives you an AJAX page. Now let's talk about master pages, a very important feature of .NET. Um, I remember .NET before there were master pages, and everybody was always screaming for something like them for good reason. 
the master pages create a consistent layout. They uh, centralize your common functionality, and they make it much easier to maintain. Basically, the idea of a master page is that there is a, uh, a single template, a master, with a place for the content, and every page uses the master page, usually uh, as the surrounding elements of all your pages. And so the master page usually contains your styles, your header, menu, and footer, and then there's a content section where the rest of the page is uh, actually contained. And though their ASPX pages refer to a master page are then embedded in that master page, and it works out quite nicely. And the individual page contains the content. Here's an example of a page. This is just an example of a page, but it is a master page. You'll note, and you'll notice that it has the elements around it, which are all common to all our pages. The background, the, the heading, the menus. And in the center are where you'll have your content differ for your application. And master pages can be nested inside other master pages. That happens in uh, here. The, what we demonstrate as a SharePoint application, where the application, the IronSpeed Designer application, is embedded, embedded inside another master page in the SharePoint. So you have your SharePoint, uh, and inside of that is another master page for the IronSpeed Designer application. .NET takes care of merging your master pages with your page content. Uh, and so the master page can inherit from other master pages. Um, I don't recall that we do that, but it can, can happen. In your master pages, the best practice we've observed is to create multiple master pages for different needs. Perhaps you have a uh, couple of sections of your application where you want them to be slightly different. It's very easy to create multiple master pages and then uh, to one section of your application you assign uh, one set of the one master page and to the other one you assign the other master page, therefore giving them subtle differences and keeping your application uh, still consistent but uh, providing the look that you want. You can nest master pages as if you need to. Um, you include, normally you wouldn't do that, but uh, there may come a place where you have to have one master page and then you want to put another uh, whole master page set of pages inside it and so you can they can be nested. Uh, you include all your CSS styles, JavaScript, et cetera, in your master pages and not in your content. Keep the page content focused on the actual data of your page. Let's see if we've got a question here. Will IronSpeed support MVC4 in the future? Uh, it's, uh, depending on how you interpret MVC4, uh, it's model view controller. Um, IronSpeed Designer is already a model view controller, but in, it, in the abstract sense and not in the sense of following anybody else's particular model. IronSpeed Designer was developed before that was around, and so it presents its own MVC model. It's, so you'll recognize it abstractly as an MVC application, but it does not follow the particular conventions of any MVC uh, framework that's put out by Microsoft or anybody else. There are subtle differences, which means Microsoft, uh, Microsoft MVC4 application uses uh, different details than an IronSpeed Designer application. Can I put security things at master page level? Uh, can I get the user role as using code in the master page? Um, somebody else may be able to tell me why. I, generally, I think that's not a good idea, um, and that your pages should uh, handle the security individually, but I don't know that 100%. Uh, that's just the feeling I have. We don't do it that way. Um, but, uh, and actually, um, sure, I can tell you why. Because security 
is about um, processing your pages. The master page is about the, the layout and view of your pages. And there, uh, that doesn't involve security at all. It involves security only when your content it judges whether or not it's appropriate to be seen by the current user. And so it's a good idea to include your security with your content. How do you use several master pages in IronSpeed? Uh, I'll give you a, a quick example. Um, suppose I have one, one folder, one set of pages that wants to use one master page and another that wants to use another. Then um, just some subtle variations, maybe a different header, maybe a slightly different footer, maybe a different set of menus, uh, no problem. I go to, well, let's see if I can open up a, an application. Don't have time to do many demos today, but we will uh, try and give you an example on this one, because this is a common topic and very handy, actually. So let's see if I can find myself an application to look at. Because here, so here we have an application based on the Southwind database, so order entry application, which you can find in our sample apps on our website at uh, as Acme OMS or the um, Acme order entry. Now, here we have just one master page that we're using. Where are my master pages? We're using the horizontal menu master. If I wanted to create a new one, I would simply create a duplicate. Um, I'll leave it this name, but you name it then something that means something. You have two sets. I can then go to any of my pages here and go to my, let's see, what do I want? Uh, I want to, in here we go, in my page selector, I want to look at my master page. Nope, wrong place. Sorry about that, but not this here. Here's an edit sales rep page. We'll take a look at the page itself. In the page, in the properties, we can see the page control. In the page control, you'll see the display property, which gives you the opportunity to select the master page. And so the master page, if you want to change it, I would just browse and go to, uh, well, you'll see that the master pages I can select from don't include my master page here. And the reason for that is I haven't built this application yet which is fine, it doesn't matter because I can, once I once I built this so that the master page is completed, then the master page, this extra master page will be there, and I can select from my page any one of these as the master page. Therefore, I'll create a duplicate, vary the content or the layout as I want for subtle differences, and then assign each page that uses the new master page, the new master page. That's a, basically it. Okay, let me cancel that. Do we need Microsoft Visual Studio if we use IronSpeed? Uh, you don't need it. It's very handy and uh, you'll be limited in the amount of customization you can do because uh, Visual Studio is very handy in developing and debugging code, but if you don't need to do that, then uh, IronSpeed Designer gives you the facility to develop your entire application uh, and even customize it some uh, without having Visual Studio at all. And, and then there are the other, the other end of the spectrum, the people who know so much about their applications that sometimes they don't even use Visual Studio. They just go in and use a text editor. Ah, Dan asked, what is MVC? Uh, as I said earlier, it is an acronym, uh, I think developed by Microsoft, but it stands for Model View Controller. And it is a uh, 
It is a way of looking at applications and segmenting them into different parts, trying to segment the functions so that you can isolate functions. Again, it's part of the overall development philosophy of, uh, of developing in pieces that communicate rather than uh, having all one big blob uh, and allowing you, therefore, to uh, divide and conquer your work. Um, for more details, if you uh, just look up MVC, you'll get all the messy details and everything else. Basically, uh, it is an N-tier application. Uh, that's what we're just going to talk about. The N-tier gives you a model view controller, a form of model view controller application. And basically, it divides the application into different parts where different parts of the work are done and concentrated. I'd suggest using, and now Chris says, I'd suggest uh, using a page base, custom base page for the individual page. That way you can implement on pages you want. Ah. <coughs> Chris is, uh, let me see if I got you right, Chris. I think it, a custom base page, remember I mentioned that we all inherit from the .NET page class, but we, in, but in IronSpeed you have a base application page that inherits from the page class, and that all IronSpeed designer app, uh, parts of the application inherit from the code, and that gives you the opportunity, as Chris mentioned here, if you have a custom base page, to co you can put other things in that, and they immediately are available to all your pages. It's it's the code equivalent of the layout master page. Remember, master pages are for layout. The custom base pages are for code. And yes, that works fine. How can workflow be handled using IronSpeed 10? A situation where a staff approved it and email is fired off for another staff for approval. Okay, that's the general workflow situation. Now, we can't go into workflow. It's not part of this uh, webinar, but just let me mention one of the features of IronSpeed Designer is uh, that you can assign your own emails. And so you design your pages so that emails are sent on the appropriate button action. And uh, check the videos page on the IronSpeed Designer website. You'll get an example of what we mean. Uh, I think the question comes from thinking that maybe IronSpeed Designer has a particular canned form of workflow that it implements and you just have to push a few buttons. That's not the way it is. IronSpeed Designer gives you all the facility and the page types you need, but you still have to program your own parts of the database which maintain workflow status. You have to assign your own workflow uh, emails. and so. There's still some work, but it's a lot less work than trying to do it from scratch. How do you get Bing Google Maps to show up for each record? Um, Derek, take a look at our sample applications. You can download them, see how it's done. We have a Google Map interface in our formulas. Uh, so you use the formula feature in IronSpeed Designer, and you can see all of that. That's how it's done. Take a look at our sample applications download it and see what's done there. Okay, let's talk about NTR applications. Came up and looking at MVC, um, the, you divide the application into NTRs. Remember I said it was in order to divide and conquer the work in your application. Your layout is in your ASPX page. You can concentrate on one section of the work at, to at a time. The UI code and code behind files and you have a separate business layer where you uh, handle the uh, controls uh, of your data. And then you have the data access layer, which handles the information from the database. And you have stored procedures. You can have stored procedures. You don't have to uh, either way. And you can have stored procedures in the database. So basically, you have your application broken up into man more manageable parts. Uh, here's an example of what we just talked about. And for N-tier application, you change it should layout to layout should not impact your code behind. Uh, 
your changes to the database schema should have minimal impact on your data UI later. Of course, your data access, since it's all done at the server side, is uh, strongly typed in the .NET language. Your paging should be done in the database and not in memory. What that means is if you're paging through a long table and you're looking at a few records at a time, you don't want to send all those records into your application. You want to have the application use the SQL, which creates the, gets you the, just the records you need, and you don't want to do that in memory. The ASP grid view control and list view control do paging in memory, and so uh, that's why we don't use them. We have our own table controls and record controls. And uh, as you might suspect, concurrency handling is important in highly asynchronous applications. So now we've gone through basically uh, the features of a .NET application. Let's look at Iron Speed Designer. Iron Speed Designer implements the best practices for your .NET code model, your page lifecycle, your AJAX, and your master pages and your interior applications. That's what we're doing here at Iron Speed. We provide the tool to create applications so that we can incorporate into them best practices. Um, as the, and best ideas as they become known so that they are available to everybody. Everybody doesn't have to learn about everything all the time. You can use, build on your Iron Speed Designer application and let us do a lot of the legwork and the uh, simple work that goes on behind. And you can focus on the uh, complicated design or uh, sophisticated design work that's unique to your particular application. It lets you focus on your business logic, and you use the .NET code model to extend your application. Lay and layout customizations, uh, you use the spreadsheet grid. Um, I don't, let's see. We should take a look at this. This is part of actually a getting started webinar, which we do every Friday, it teaches you about the parts of Iron Speed Designer. So we're going to uh, go ahead, uh, and we're talking here about the grid view, but I'm going to assume that you already know about the basic parts of Iron Speed Designer, because that's what we do in getting started. Uh, so we use the grid. You can copy, paste, and move. Your layout is very easy to arrange. You can uh, change your appearance, modify styles. All these are techniques which are very handy and very easy to control. Uh, Use the cell editor and code editor, so you can include everything else in Iron Speed Designer. You use the toolbox to bring in new controls. Uh, we, again, in getting started, we handle all of the uh, things that are available in the toolbox. You can easily pre-configure your panels and controls to make them do exactly what you want. And you have the formula feature in Iron Speed Designer, which allows you to use Excel-like formulas to provide content for your page. You can customize your data access layer. Um, and let's just look at that in our Iron Speed Designer. You'll notice here in the Application Explorer, we have our application. We also have a business layer. and the data access layer. And this contains all of the uh, data access that we asked for to be used. You can customize those because, let's see, use Excel, use formulas on the data access layer, you, your global settings and batch operations, you can control using uh, the BMW feature, that's not a car, that stands for Batchmeister Wizard, and it's a, a very handy feature of Iron Speed Designer, which allows you to pre-configure uh, application-wide features in your database. Here, let's take a look at that since we don't really cover that in getting started. Is it in Build or Tools? Batchmeister Wizard. 
The Batchmeister wizard allows you to control initialization with standard formulas. Uh, these formulas are added to your business layer so that controls with certain names uh, can be assumed to be initialized uh, and handled unique or in common throughout the application wherever they occur. It can, you can add your own validation controls also. And you can have custom where clauses. Once you do, if you check any of these, then those formulas are added to your application and occur in your business layer. And so they occur throughout your application everywhere uh, the elements of the controls are handled. Um, again, with anything in Iron Speed Designer, once you're pointed to it, then be sure to check up on the online documentation for that feature so that you can become familiar with what you need to do. And so Batchmeister Wizard gives you one sort of global control. And there's the other one that we have in Iron Speed Designer, which is to use the application generation options to control how uh, pages are built, how they lay it out, and how they're controlled. You can go to the application generation options in your Iron Speed Designer, again available in the Tools menu while you're looking at an application, and go through and see the things that can be controlled in your application. There are applica application options for the web pages and for the mobile pages. There are different sets of options. And uh, then there's the rest of the titles. You can go through them yourself. But it's very important to know what they are if you want to take advantage of the facilities. Let's see uh, if I was one uh, was looking at the other day. Uh, the parts labeled common page options are particularly interesting. A person asked us the other day about uh, why his name, uh, he had a large table name on an application. He says, why is it uh, truncated? Uh, and the answer to that is lays in the maximum name width feature of the application generation options. The idea is that just to prevent sort of the outlying situation where one name makes your whole application, throws your whole application page off, we limit, put some limits on what the maximum width of names can be. Um, you can change that. We don't stick you with that. If you want it to be 100 characters and allow a particular name to be very long, you can do that. Uh, you just have to know where the option is. And so that's, that's the idea of application generation options. That's just one out of the hundreds that are available that allow you to control individually your application. And let's uh, go on with page layout customization. In page layout customization, uh, you can modify the contents of page with drag and drop. You convert your page layout to ASPX. You don't have to know ASPX or HTML. And the cell editor allows you to modify the contents of cells and further control what's displayed on your page. Uh, there is the toolbox control. And even though I cover this in the getting started webinar, um, we should probably take a look at the toolbox because it's very important. There, we'll put aside the property sheet and get the toolbox now. And talk about the sections. Of course, the section for headers, footers, and menus is the standard headers, footers, and menus that are available in case you haven't gotten them. Usually, when you create new pages, they come with headers and footers, and you don't have to worry about it. But if you have a completely blank page, you can drop in your own headers, footers, menus, et cetera. But this is not used that often that I'm aware of. What is used often is the reports and forms. Here is where you have access to all of the data-backed panels that you can use on your pages. So you have 
data entry forms, uh, and it's given me unrelated ones. And what that means is, if I'm in a section of a page here, I have an edit sales rep page, right? So we'll look in here, we have a sales rep control, and then we have some table controls, which are the child controls of this table control. Well, let's go to the sales rep field, because here, now we're in the context of a sales rep field. And so some of the elements, some of the tables are related, and some of them are not. And that's what related and unrelated means. But in any event, you can choose either related or unrelated. Uh, and the important part about related is when you drop a panel for one into your control, this is not a good place, but it illustrates the point. You get the panel and you can choose whether you want an add a table, edit table, add record, edit record, etc. You can choose the options that apply to it. You can choose the fields that you'll see in it. You can choose which forms of search the panel will provide, which form of filters it will provide, and any totals it will have in it, all those details. And then when you finish, you get another panel contained in your page. But this panel is related to the sales rep of this record, the sales rep ID. And so, and so we'll only show that. And that's what we mean by related panels. Unrelated panels don't have any relationship, and so the filter, uh, the let's build this, and I'll show you what I mean. The data source for it is not controlled by anything else. Come on, finish. And now we look at the data sources on our page. Orders table control query one, that's this one, the one we just built, and we'll look at the where clause, and we see that the only records it will show are the orders where the sales rep ID is equal to sales rep ID of the record we're looking. And that's what we mean by a dependent record. OK, uh, let's see. Well, uh, we're still going through, and I still have time, so we're going through our toolbox. The Charts section of the toolbox uh, gives you charts, and it also gives you uh, charts of count, sum, and average. Uh, you can use all these charts to enhance the display of your data in your pages. This is a very, very valuable uh, set of tools, and you should use it when you have the data which warrants it. Um, you can use the toolbox to drop in any fields, including aggregate fields, which are uh, can be a big help sometimes. So we have some average, minimum, et cetera. Um, there is a whole section for using filters, which now doesn't show anything because I'm not in a filter section. But if I go to a filter section of my page, and let's see what I've got. I, oh, uh, first of all, let me get rid of this because I certainly don't need this control. And in my sales rep record control, oh, won't have filters here. We have buttons. We have filters for the orders table control. Here in a filter section, you can add many other filters for your records. And so you can enhance the filters using the filter section. Here are standard buttons that can go with the page, reset, go search. But you can make your own buttons also. These are the standard already configured buttons, usually just a few. Here, this other section on ASPX and other controls is what you need for all the general ASPX, AJAX controls, everything that you need to add to your, or might need to add to your application. So that's the toolbox, a very important feature of Iron Speed Designer. The formula language. Uh, and let me show you what formula language means in case you don't know. Um, any of the fields that we have in a, uh, this is a filter. I don't want the filters. I want to see just a set of fields. Let's take a look at the, whoops, reports to field. And then let's look at the formulas that go with that. And you can see 
on an editing record, this is assigned to this. Well, I can change this any way I want. I don't have to have it give the reports to value. That's what it's supposed to be doing here. I could change its formula so that it takes it from the database record, takes it from UI control, other UI controls. I could combine them together in formulas. I can use a whole set of functions. And I can use different operators. And so I can construct a formula. And if you need formula help, when you're looking at a formula, just go to the Help button. And you'll see it throws you into the Help in. And I don't want to change my RoboForm. <coughs> and so you can get the online help and everything you wanted. And you saw, you heard earlier the question about, well, how do I get the geolocation that Google Maps and you'll look at all the functions that are available in the formulas, and you'll get down to geocoding, and you'll find that you have that there. And so the formula feature is very powerful. Be sure to check it out and use it when you can. So the key questions you, we like to suggest that you ask yourself when considering Iron Speed Designer and the .NET model and constructing applications built on the .NET model is what is your time worth and what's the ROI you get out of Iron Speed Designer? When you match up those questions, uh, I think we showed you that you can get a tremendous savings in time, and so the return on investment it can be substantial. You don't have to do ASPX. You don't have to know code. For most applications, your interaction with the actual ASP action code is minimal. Of course, Science Speed Designer allows you to customize everything and, uh, and becomes a different form of tool for those developers who know what they're doing and use it to develop, uh, do a lot of the standard work behind the scenes, and then build on top of it. Let's take a look at the couple more questions. Uh, a little off topic. Okay, well, if it's, we'll see how far off topic. Like to know how to have different size heights show edit or table controls for use on different pages is required to customize appearance. I see how to change the number of default rows, but I'm referring to the container size itself. <coughs> the container probably worth mentioning. The container size itself is part of customizing the look of an iron speed designer application, which is controlled in the themes by your CSS. So all of your application uh, is controlled first by your page style, and it, within that page style by the themes that you have, or sorry, the uh, CSS that you use. All of uh, an Iron Speed Designer's CSS is controlled in the base styles file. Here you see the all of the CSS, and you'll see there's a whole lot that controls your application. And I talked about saving time, and uh, I look at this CSS constantly, and uh, not constantly, but every once in a while I'll say, man, just developing that CSS would take me 100 years, and so I'm glad I used my Iron Speed Designer application. Uh, but it also involves understanding what's in it, and so for that point, you, uh, of course, the browsers these days are much better. Uh, Firefox, Chrome, uh, IE, all have debugging modes which allow you to see the underlying CSS, and they're uh, don't overlook them because they're very handy for generating or for looking and seeing where your page is, seeing what CSS is being used. The one that was asked me was, let's say, look for PCC, which I happen to know is. That's the style I want to look at. It's the page container center style, and it gives a particular height to the page container. So if you want to vary that height, just had a question from a user the other day who wanted to say, wanted to cut that down, just take this style. I'm copying it. I'll take it over my styles file. Now my styles file initially has, well, it has something in it because I customized the wrapper in this particular application. You take a style out of your base styles, put it in styles. Now, this one will override anything that's in styles. 
So if I want to change my height of my page to 100 pixels or 108 pixels, then there it is. That's all I have to do. So that's how you can go and there. You can use that technique for customizing anything in the styles, which is a myriad of things about your application. When generating an application, you can specify inline procedures as opposed to stored procedures. Can you edit inline procedures in a similar manner as you can stored procedures? No, you can't. Um, John, the inline procedures um, provide the basic access SQL, and they're not done in stored procedures. They're executed in the database. And the inline SQL is executed in the database, but not at the same level as stored procedures. So, uh, <clears throat> and even the stored procedures that we provide, uh, if you edit them, when you generate them again, they'll be overwritten. So you can't really change them. You can provide a customized one, that is, provide your own name and then call it separately. But if you try and change the Iron Speed Designer stored procedures, as far as I know, as soon as we build them again, they'll be changed, put back to their original state. How do you find the CSS for a particular item? in the grid layout. <clears throat> That's what I said about uh, looking at your application. Well, let's uh, look at my application here. Yes, I want to save it, and then I'm going to build it. So I'm going to run my application. And it's going to very soon bring me up a browser, which will show my application. And it uh, looks like we finally have everybody into this. As I have a number of questions here. So let's try and go through these questions. And, and we're running up on our time. Of course, we're not going to finish before I answer all the questions. But let's try to keep it going here. Um, here we have our application. This is IE. In IE, if you hit the F12 key or one of the menus, you will go into debug mode. In debug mode, uh, excuse me, I don't need all this room. It shows you uh, many things in your application. Let's get my pointer here and go see. I can see what particular element is in any place. And suppose I want to see what this is. Now here, over here in my styles, is where the, what styles are being used <coughs> and where they're being used. And so. We're using the debugging facilities of your browser, you can find out exactly what you need to know. Uh, let's see. Back to the master pages. How do I create and handle plain text HTML pages that have no data controls? For example, I need a series of help pages and explanatory text. Um, you handle them, uh, I would guess, Chris, with a uh, any, any editor, text editor, if you have pages, just plain pages, they can be included in, in your Iron Speed Designer application. You put them in a separate folder, which is usually a good idea, not in the same folders with the ASPX pages for Iron Speed, but they could be, because Iron Speed Designer will leave them alone, and they will be exactly as you present them. You can link to them, you can show them, and they can have links back to your pages, so there's no no problem with having mixed pages, the pages you do manually. Does Crystal Reports come with, with or install? Uh, Crystal Reports isn't installed by Iron Speed Designer. Crystal Reports, um, actually, I don't know. I think it's part of Visual Studio, but I'm not sure. Any, in any event, we do have a code customization, which allows you to use Crystal Reports, uh, and you can use it from there. I don't know what the particular licensing constraints are with the crystal reports that you can use. How is an edit table form added as another tab in an existing tab control? This is a question that comes up all the time, and it's something that uh, confounds people no end. And so let's take a look at this. <clears throat> well, this is our application, but what I want to do is go to my sales reps, because I was looking at my edit sales reps table. And you'll notice that in our edit, let's look at the whole page structure. We see we have a whole 
bunch of um, child tables. These tables, all in tab panels. So if I look at, this is an editing a sales rep. So if we look at editing a sales rep, right, let's go to a sales rep and edit it. And here's the page we're looking at. It has the edit record, and then it has all these table control, all these tabbed containers. So you want to add something. You want to add another thing here. Okay, let's go to our editor. The first thing you do is remove the tabs. Take another, let's right now let's just take a container out, but the idea would be I would take another, I would drop another container, a tab, table from the um, reports, forms, and sums, add what I wanted in over here, put it in underneath here, right click and choose insert tabs. And then I have my tabs back. Now, if I want, I can mess with the naming of the tabs and stuff. But that's, I don't think that's necessary because let's see what happens if I rebuild this page and go back to my sales rep. And now I'll we'll refresh the page. And You'll see I took the tab out. Whoops, there it goes. I took the tab out and I put it back in and there are what I have. So um, that's how you handle the tabs. At least the best way I've found to do it. Can you add a join to a data source query? No, you cannot. Um, we used to have a thing called custom queries and it was, uh, it was taking on too much of the database's role and providing a lot of extra complications. So we don't allow you to create your own custom queries. We like to focus on Iron Speed Designer as a page creation tool and use the database as your uh, query selection tool. So for that, if you want to do joins, do them. Of course, you can do joins with uh, your initial selection. But once a query is selected in Iron Speed Designer, then you can't treat it as just another query and change the whole SQL of it. If you want to do that, you have to create a new one with a new data source. Let's see. Inline procedures and stored procedures. Please explain this again using an example. Huh. Well, the Let's uh, see, I don't have one right here, but I can show you what we mean. Um, in your application wizard, when you create your database, you, know, you remember, if you haven't seen it, you remember that there, here is what the section we're talking about. Do you want stored procedures? Do you want inline? I can choose stored procedures. It won't make any difference because this particular application is our sample access database. Access doesn't have stored procedures, but we can certainly show it to you. Uh, if you would choose in stored procedures, then what would happen is I would get stored procedures that perform the functions used by data access in the application. And those stored procedures will be listed here in the databases tab so that there aren't any listed here because they aren't created. But if you did have them, then you would see all the stored procedures. I'm going to take it for granted that you know what a stored procedure looks like, and therefore, uh, it, when you see one, there'll be just elements that you can look at and edit if you want. And also valuable, if you want to edit it and preserve it, then you just copy it to a new stored procedure name that won't be overwritten by Iron Speed Designer. The standard names that are there are prepared every time you're application is built. There's, do I have to have a, a, an instance of Iron Speed Designer executing for each app when using multiple apps? Uh, no, Stephen, um, you should talk to your sales rep about this, but basically Iron Speed Designer is a tool used to develop apps. 
And so you develop as many apps as you want. Those apps run themselves, uh, don't require IronSpeed Designer to run. Uh, that's one of the great features of IronSpeed Designer. It is really a true tool. And we don't have extra licensing associated with it. We don't, it doesn't cost you extra or anything else. Um, it's a true tool to do excellent development work. You develop as many things as you want. They're all yours. And they uh, run independently of IronSpeed Designer. How can I create a drop-down list to record set on a page that does not have a record set? Ah. Um, well, let's see. I believe that you can, you, to have a drop-down list, you need a panel. And so I think the, uh, the point, Kevin, is that you would, you have a page, uh, just a plain old blank page, and that blank page doesn't have any record associated, doesn't have any association with the database. In order to have a drop-down list for a, a record on another payer for a, another table, a field in another table, then you would drop a panel for that table, get the database, get the record, and extract the record, everything else from the panel. Remove everything else and just leave your drop-down list. But you have to have a panel, and maybe that's what's been uh, causing you trouble. I know it's caused me trouble in the past. It didn't dawn on me that uh, you actually have to have a panel if you're going to have data. And so look at it that way and give it a try. If you still have a problem, talk to uh, see about a, a support case or a forum post. How can I change the record source of a forum from a table, record data source for a form, from a table to a view if I find I need more info than is in the table. Um, basically, you can't change the data source for a table or for a page. If you want to change, well, you can modify it, but you can't change it in the way you're talking about run in a view. What you would do is create the view, create a new page, and then modify that page just like the one you've got. You'll find, uh, uh, I thought, well, wouldn't it be better if I could just uh, put in a new name? But no, you can't do that. There's too much underlying stuff in the page that doesn't allow you to do that. But it isn't that difficult, I've found, to go ahead and have one page use a a view with an expanded view of the data and create the same page over again using the first as a template it goes quite quite quickly. Is stored procedures faster in terms of performance? You know I don't know the answer to that. Um, the regular SQL, the inline SQL works very well and so and for development it has some added features that you don't have the database doing extra stuff behind you. Um, just on a on principle, I would say once my application is ready, I would use uh, stored procedures and let the database do as much work as possible. But uh, during development, I use inline SQL so I can monitor it um, all the time in my application if I have to. Normally, I don't monitor it because nothing goes wrong. OK. And now, can I pass the selected value of a filter drop-down list in a URL without custom coding? Let's see. Without custom coding, that's the question. Um, I don't know how you would do that. That would take some looking. I don't have the time to do that right now. Um, I tend to think not, but um, sitting and experimenting with the formulas uh, and remembering that the selected value of a filter is just another field on your page so you can get access to that field. And so um, it may very well be possible to create a whole URL containing that uh, value. So I would definitely look into that because I think, actually I think it can be done. ISD creates folders based on the names of the database tables. Can they be changed in development? Folders based, ah, that's a good question. Yes, they can. Um, 
you can change parts of your application. I haven't tried changing a folder name. I think there may be some problems with that in the fact that um, you have lots of things, lots of URLs that refer to the folder names, and they won't change automatically uh, that I know of. I'm, I would I would try that and see what happens, but I'm pretty sure if I change one of my folder names that I will have to then go change any of the menus and the URLs the, that point to it. Um, but you can change them. There's no requirement. The easiest way, uh, they're named that way for a reason, because supposedly we assume you're using meaningful names in your database. And that's the key, one of the key we bring up in, the, in getting started with IM Speed Designer. It's very important in your database to have meaningful names so that it reflects the kinds of names you want in your application. And that's where I look for the answer to that question. How do I change an app from inline to stored procedure app after application development is finished? Very simple, Chris. You just, anytime you're looking at your application, you can always run the application wizard. You can just go to the application settings that change the stored procedures, click finish, and as I said, this one won't change because it's accessed, so it'll ignore the stored procedures. But if you had a, uh, an SQL server, for instance, database, then you would find yourself with stored procedures. And so that's all you have to do. All right, uh, looks like uh, we've hit the end. Let's, this is going to finish, and uh, let's go back to our slides and talk about where you learn more, because they, we've talked about a lot today, and we've brought, given you an overview of the, whole, of the framework in which we're working, that is the .NET programming model. Um, but there is much more to learn. And you can learn that from training videos on our website. You can learn it from our training courses. Uh, this is a, a one-time course presented one time, but we have regular getting started every Fridays. We have occasional intermediate courses and advanced topics that are all available and scheduled on the website. We have third-party training courses. Uh, you can also learn more on the online help. Actually, I mentioned about going to help for formulas. Any part of Iron Speed Designer, when you have a question, I would go to the online help. One of the most valuable things about the online help whoops, is the search box. Uh, it's now my application is finally finishing and coming back. So let's go back here. And back to our slides. And in the search box and the online help page is where you start with anything. Type in your query because it will search the thousand pages of help. It will also search all the content for our forum. So you'll get an excellent overview of all the information we have on your particular question. And we also have, as I said, the forums. It's indexed for search and you can start your own thread. You can observe what other people have said about topics and talk to our other users. We have a large user group and generally very active forum. And for anything, really, if you have a project in Iron Speed Designer, you need help uh, planning and marshalling your resources, talk to your sales rep. Your sales rep is a great resource for uh, helping you get going with your Iron Speed Designer and making the most progress. And with that, we'll take one final question. I have a .NET 4 website I created using version 9.2. How would I go about opening the same project using version 10 without Iron Speed combining Designer converting the project to .NET 4.5? Well, Iron Speed Designer version 10 doesn't require 4.5, it handles 4.5. I want the version to remain 4.0. So as far as I know, you can open it in version 10. It will ask you to convert the application to Iron Speed Designer 10, and it will be uh, converted to 10, but your .NET framework will remain 4.0. I want to use the .NET version to remain in 4.0, however, .NET 4.0, I don't know how it's if it's grayed out, that means you don't have .NET 4.0 on your machine, or you have .NET 4.5 on your machine. 
Um, in any event, if you have an application that's already created, you don't have to change it. So don't change that in the application wizard. I'd like to use ISP Designer version 10 without upgrading to .NET 4.5. Um, actually, I don't T. T, do me a favor. Um, I have something I'd like to investigate with that. So if you'll put in a support case for me, uh, um, just put in a support case about that very question, and I'll uh, do some further research on it. But uh, I don't know of anything right now that prevents you from doing it. I want to investigate a little further. And that's it for today, folks. Thanks very much for coming. I um, hope you got as much as you wanted out of the uh, webinar. There's always more to get. And so come back again and see us often. And have fun with your Iron Speed Designer.